Well, I'm here with Chris Dan Miller. Hi, Chris. Hi. And Davy, Davy Niddle. Hi. Hey. We are here to talk about an Emily Dickinson poem, which is known as "I Felt a, by its first line." I felt a funeral in my brain. I'll ask Chris to read it, and then we'll talk about it for five minutes somehow. I felt a funeral in my brain, and mourners to and fro kept treading, treading, till it seemed that sense was breaking through. And when they all were seated, a service like a drum kept beating, beating, till I thought my mind was going numb. And then I heard them lift a box and creak across my soul with those same boots of lead again. Then space began to toll, as all the heavens were a bell. And being, but an ear, and eye, and silence, some strange race wrecked, solitary, here. And then, a plank in reason broke, and I dropped down and down, and hit a world at every plunge, and finished knowing. Then. Then dash. <laughs> so, unlike many of the poems that we admire, I'm going to say I admire, uh, by Dickinson, this one kind of sticks to its conceit. It tells a story. So, can we say, with all complication left aside for a second, what the story is? Yeah, the story is I felt something that felt like. A funeral, which is to say, it's then, not a funeral. And then, all but then the it follows the, the conceit of the funeral right. um, through what you could call death, right? The plank and reason that broke, and I dropped down and down. Or but burial, right? Well, or burial, um, or something else, and okay. and something else is left, of course. Uh, ambiguous, as you point out, by that um, final then. So you could read that final line and finish knowing then. All right, so th then th is the big existential question. Yeah. Okay, Davy. Um, so it is a relatively narratively coherent conceit, but of course, Chris warned us that at the beginning, it's all based on something being like that. Okay, so the eighty thousand dollar question is, what is the something that this is like? I think a clue to the something that this is like is the fact that the um, first um, experience we get is feeling and the last experience we get is knowing. And I think that the thing that it's like is trying to manage the space between feeling and knowing, trying to understand when feeling is or points to a form of knowledge mm -hmm. and what it means to take um, available information, mm -hmm. sonic information, words, experiences of reading, experiences of uh, locating a self, mm. and translating feeling mm. into knowledge. So it's not, I felt a funeral in my heart, and now I'm going to tell you how it feels. I, I think this is something about thinking. So Chris, just to summarize what we said a minute ago, and then I'll ask you a, kind of a giant question, I apologize. So one option is, and this was the way I read it in seventh grade, is, oh, she's dead and she's imagining her own funeral. Um, and this is what it's like to think about that. Uh, or she's not dead yet, but she's thinking about what it's going to be like when she is dead. Or second, which is more or less what we think, or generally what you do when you get past seventh grade, is um, this is the way the brain works. Now, to the extent that that's true, what do we do with it? Well, you could say this is about consciousness. You right. could, right? And right. what it's what it's like to experience a moment when you're, as it were, trapped inside your own head. Being is but an ear, and I am wrecked with silence in total solitude. Right. So that's the key moment of the poem for me. That those incredible enjambed lines in the third and fourth uh, stanzas. But at the same time, you could say, uh, um, people are more and more saying things like this. It could be about the experience of a migraine or the experience of uh, some other kind of uh, um, painful experience that mm. just puts you entirely inside your own head. Right. So right. it's sort of about thinking, but right. also sort of about not thinking, right. as you say. It's somewhere in that realm between right. Um, right. The, the, the feeling and the brain. Wow, that's really great. So, Davey, where are we going to go from there? Because we, we're interested in poems like um, uh, uh, The Brain is Wider Than the Sky or um, uh, the, what's the 
brain in the groove mm -hmm. program, the brain within, the brain its, within groove. its groove. That's really a lot about uh, the kind of thinking that we're all interested in. But the great thing Chris just did is it could be like their brain, we have brain events and they're really interesting and complicated. Can you go further with that? Yeah, because I think it's also about a desire to move past, Chris, within your reading, a physical sensation of, as all the heavens were a bell in being but an ear, it's not that, it's with the knowledge of the heavens being a bell, that being is an ear in which silence is an experience mm. that wrecks. Mm. It's only because of the knowledge that there is an experience to hear, sense, take part in, that right. the silence is uh, wrecking, destructive. Right. And so I think that like this the experience of consciousness that it could be thinking through is one of a desire to think more than is available a desire to uh, have an experience have a cognitive experience that's maybe mediated in some way by some kind of painful experience mm. a migraine or otherwise mm. and the desire to like that being painful but also the desire to reach outside of whatever that pain forecloses mm. Chris we said at the beginning, and of course this has to be wrong, in a five-minute conversation, everything has to be wrong, but we said, okay, once we get that first little likening, it becomes, it's fairly consistent. But then there is this race, a strange race, and that is as if to say, and I and silence like some strange race, wrecked, solitary here. There's a third level of conceit. Can you do anything with that strange race? Yeah, it'd be, so first I want to go back to space, right? So it, it's space that begins to toll. So there's some out-of-body experience that's happening right, here. Right. Um, so you're in space. Um, you feel like your entire being is just an ear. You and silence are a race separate from humanity, oh right? You are yeah. some strange race wrecked in space. And all you have wrecked, is like shipwreck. Shipwreck, yeah, yeah, like shipwreck. And all you have is your hearing, right? So mm. all you have is what wow. you can hear. And I think, I mean, it's a lovely way to think about poetry too, right? You know, so what does it mean really to enter into a poem? Well, it could be that you're wrecked in you know some strange place with silence, just mm. listening, mm. Um, and then you come back. Wow. The what we're going to do is wrap up somehow uh, with final thoughts, each of you. So, Davey, a final thought? Yep, this is uh, making me think about um, so many uh, images we get in Dickinson of thinking and being being like houses. Uh, that We have um, hearing uh, the experience of um, creaking across my soul, a plank and reason breaking, and um, cognition and selfhood being like a structure, being like a house. Uh, being something that's built to contain more than what it's possible for it to contain mm. uh, is a homology we get between poems and houses, and I think that some of that is happening here and in other Mod Poe Dickinson poems. Nice. Great. Chris, final I want, thought? I want to talk about the last line, which could be read and finished knowing, right? So I'm the at end the end of, of something. Well, no, it could mean I finished knowing. That is to say, I'm at the end of knowing. It could mean I have finished in some other way. And I'm knowing. Mm. Um, and and mm. uh, that's another kind of play Holy that you cow. get, even before you get to that then, which could be in finished knowing then, right? All done. Or in finished knowing, yeah. and finished knowing yeah. then, right? So is this right. an opening of what we know, or is it yeah. the closing of what we For know? For a supposedly fairly comprehensible poem by Dickinson, among them, this is pretty incomprehensible. <laughs> it's and it's about incompre incomprehensibility. <laughs> My final thought is this great, boring moment in the in the church service <laughs> like it's not boring the she writes keep beating like beating till I thought my non mind was going numb I wrote ha ha boring church service so this thing that's happening in your brain is like a funeral it's like a memorial service that leads to a burial and you gotta go to the service if it's gonna happen in your brain like that and you yeah. go to the service and there's all this the service is like a drum beating 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 oh my gosh I have to be bored here too there's something really funny and winky and like she knows boring church services. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, Dickinson is so witty, so lovely to Very see witty. that. Uh, and we so. are all witty. Thank you both, <laughs> Chris and Davey. Thank Thanks you. So. This was great. Thank you. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for Mod Poe, a free and open course at modpoe.org. <laughs>